The point, the point of this five slide pitch deck is not to try and be a VC pitch. We're not, this is not the pitch deck you're going to use into the accelerator. This is just to get you to start thinking through it. It's another way of showing your business and showing your business model. Um, it often gets really confusing when you're standing up at a pitch and you put up like a value proposition canvas and you try and talk through all the points. It just it kind of gets lost in it. So being need to put it into a pitch deck means that you need to articulate the idea in a nice, concise little way and really understand the core of the message that you're putting across. This is also the kind of thing that you're going to give to an investor um, if they're interested or a potential partner or sales so you can use it for sales, you can use it for lead generation, um, you can use it for kind of getting your message across. Um, and if you need a bit of money now, you know, you show it to someone, it's, it's, a, it's a summary of what you're doing today. It's, it's designed as a, as a quick teaser and there's no massive financials in this or anything, but it's, it's really focused on what, what, is, what are you doing, why is that important, what have you done to date, and what are you doing next. That's the real crux of these steps. So just to run through them quickly, the first slide is always your solution slide. So a lot of people sit, try, and put the, sit, try and paint the picture. And they try and talk to you about the education landscape in South Africa and all the things that are going wrong. And they spend five minutes going on about this. Without, and you just, halfway through the pitch, you're like, I don't even know what you do. So whenever you pitch, like, say this is what we do. And then when you're painting that picture, people are filling it in in the context of your solution. So always start with the solution. This is what my business is. This is what we do. And then you say, these are our customers. And this is how we solve their problem. And with the context of what you do, that should become pretty easy to work out. Um, and, and so you can just speak against that. How's your customer? How do you describe how? And how big is the market? Are there loads of people? Is it just a small market? Are they very particular? Do they need to be a certain gender or a certain race or a certain size company? Or what, like what? How would you describe them? And why do they have that problem that your solution is such a good fit for them? And all this information that you get from these slides comes off your iteration design, value proposition canvas, um, or the post financials, or something that you've worked on um, previously. The next slide is, is um, a how you solve it, so like what does your actual solution do, and some details, so the, your, where your solution might be, we uh, help empower informal traders um, to build sustainable businesses. These are informal traders, this is how I work through, and the how is, we have a marketplace, these are the services we provide, this is what we actually do um, of the how is what we actually do on a day-to-day -day basis to fulfill on that solution. Um, and then the, the fourth slide, which is really, really important at this stage, is stand up and talk about like what have you done to date? Who have you talked to? What was the feedback? How has your idea changed? You, you stand up and say, I initially we thought this, we went up and talked to 50 people, they said no, so now we're actually going this route. Um, and so what have you learned along the way? Don't hide those bruises and the, the getting things wrong. That's part of the process. The reason why um, a lot of investors like to invest in second or third or fourth round entrepreneurs is because they've made those mistakes. It's because they've got the experience, they know what, what they need to avoid. It shows that they've actually thought through problems and they, can, and they can wrestle with that. And that's what this slide is all about. Your progress slide is, this is what we've done today. We thought we were going off in this direction, but we realized that People had this massive problem, and so we've pivoted to doing this, and that's why we do it. And that shows that you have an understanding of your market more than if you just said, we're going with this final solution. Um, and then lastly is next steps. So always have an ask. Always have, this is what I need next. This is where we're going next. And so if you're asking for funding, never ask for funding. Ask for what the funding will enable. So if you want to build a school in Nigeria, and this is a real case, that so one girl's need I was working with the uh, $2.5 million to buy a school building in Nigeria. And when I was chatting to her, I was like, oh, she was like, I need the money, I need $2.5 million. I was like, well, what do you need the money for? She said, oh, I need to build a school. So I said, okay, but ask for the school, not for the money. If you go to the investor asking for the school, he'll give you the money to get the school. But what ended up happening was she went back to Nigeria, was at some function, chatting to an NGO, and she said, I need the school. And they're like, oh, we've got a school. They shut down a school um, a couple of months before the, the building had been sitting vacant and they were looking for a new tenant didn't know what to do with an old school building and how to repurpose it. So she got a school building for free from an NGO. Didn't need to raise any money at all. So when you're asking for the, the item, it's a lot better than asking for the money. You can ask for the money for these items, but always be clear around what that ask is and what are your next steps? What is the next big assumption you need to do? As you move back through this list, 
often when you get to one of these points, it's we need to raise a million rand so I can build the basic version of my product so I can prove that we can scale this beyond the five-man team that, I've, that we've been doing it manually. That's the way, then the investors are like, wow, you've done it manually, you completely understand that. Let me give you the money to build that tech because that seems like a reasonable cost for that. And, and so the ask is always a very clear ask on what you're actually trying to get. And at this stage, it might be network. Like, I need interviews, so when you show your mom your deck, she's like, oh, I used to work with someone in that industry. I, so what, what are your next steps? My next steps is to go validate the problem, check that it's there. So who do you need to talk to? Do you need to talk to marketing directors or CEOs? And how do you get those intros? How do you use and, your network? And often we talk about early stage funding and startups that talk about smart money. So you're not just getting money to do whatever you need to do. You're getting money with intelligence or knowledge or network behind that. And that's your typical angel investor or seed investor. So you might be saying, I need to raise 300,000 Rand to print all these flyers and to try and spam and get all these, all these companies. And the investor will be like, oh, hold on, I know the CEO of Celsius and MTN and Vodacom, I'll just give them a call and we can set up a meeting. So you don't need 100,000 Rand, but I'll put in 20,000 Rand for this other stuff you need and I'll take an equity stake. And that's a smart investor that's coming in for something more than that. So that's really what the, the five slide pitch deck is, just those five slides, that's what you're gonna cover in the two minutes. But the trick with any pitch, and this is just a habit that I try and drum into people, is always have more than the slides they tell you to. So have your six plus slides. And that's any information that you're not gonna be able to cover in the two minutes. The, the, the two minutes is not long enough to portray any kind of meaningful business. All you're doing is teasing the people and wanting to ask for more information. You want them to ask like, well, surely this, is, this isn't sustainable. Great, have a financial slide. Um, if they want to say, well, who are your partners or what evidence have you got to do to date? Or like the kind of try and preempt the questions you're going to get and have that information on the further slides. It's a great way of extending a two minute, two minute pitch into five or seven or 10 minutes. Um, and in, in any kind of pitch competition, we're going to be pretty harsh because I've told you the secret. But in most other like external pitch competitions or when you're pitching to an investor or something, you can normally steal a whole bunch more time. And it shows that you're really prepared, you've preempted their questions, you've got all that other content sitting there that you can just put on the extra slides. But Otherwise you're standing here trying to, try to wing it in front of a thank you slide. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, la, 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 la. If you can just click through and you've got a graph, and you're like, okay, I'm and talking. You're trying to remember what was that financial turning point where we were going to break <laughs> even? Was it 3.1 or 3.2? You know, like, just yeah. put it on a slide. You don't need to do it in the pitch, but you can get to it. Yeah. Uh, uh, if there is, which, so I see a financial competitor, which one would be most beneficial to include? Only stuff you've done. Okay. And just put them there. You go click, 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 click to the one. You know, if someone asks a question, if you've done something that seems valuable, you know, you could take a picture of your value proposition canvas if you like and pop it in there. It's just something that you might want to talk to. People say, have you thought about this? Well, yes, we have actually. And here's a picture of, here's a little mosaic of you talking to people at their homes or chatting to people in the barbershop queue. Like, yes, we went out and we did that. Okay, there was this guy and he did that. There was that guy and he did that. Whatever you do, just grab some documentary evidence of it and stick it in. If you've built a financial yeah. projection already, stick it in. But the extra slides are really there to, to field questions. And to, if you've teased people enough in the first part, hopefully they're going to ask you for more information and the more information is on the rest of the slides. Is cool. it better to get the extra slides to practice and the questions that you get while you're practicing? Okay. Yeah, so I mean, it's yeah. always good to try and practice the questions you think you're going to get. Um, like, there's a couple of pretty generic ones of how does this make money? If the, if the first question the person asks is, I still don't know what you do. That's a really bad sign. <laughs> you should go back to the first slide. <laughs> um, so, but, but try and preempt the questions that you're going to get. Um, if it's going to be about financials, try and think about what is the weakest part of this area of, the, of my business and business. The core is you're not crafting a perfect deck here. You're just documenting the stuff you've done. And so, if you've done extra work on something, just stick it in your deck. You know, if you've got a contract with someone um, awesome, just. Take a picture of their contract, and then they say, how do you know this works? You're like, well, this is the tender I just won. Oh, okay, and people can see the front page of that, all the details of that. If you've flown to a conference somewhere else, you can show you like a little stuff that you've actually it's really done. Just Don't ammo, ammo for you to yeah. use in the rest of the conversation. Yeah. Don't manufacture things, but if you've done things already, throw them in.